All right, it's 10.30 a.m., 23rd day of April. We'll bring you a special session of County Commissioner's Court to order. Let the record show Larry Hulsey, John Curtis, Danny Chambers, Kenneth Wood, Don Cranch are all present. First one is discuss, take action on burn ban. The reason we had this on here, Mr. Abbott, back on 417, declared a disaster for many different counties due to dry weather, and Sunnyvale County was named in that disaster. So, Mark, what do you, Brian, and Dwayne, think we need to do? Well, right now, uh, some of the counties green on the map of coverage, which means the KBI, KBBI is uh, less than 200. So, uh, as we were driving in from the panhandle in this last deployment, you could, once you hit Wichita Wall, that thing started greening up. Uh, I'm not saying that we won't continue to run grass fires because we ran several fires, but all this rain is going to continue to green up. I don't think we need a firm band. Uh, just yet, uh, it may come, but the dispatch now, Sheriff's Office has been real good about uh, telling people they can't burn on days where there's wind gusts over 23 miles an hour, which is state law, which supersedes us anyway. So as long as everybody follows that, uh, it's a different future, but that's just my recommendation. All right. So if everybody's good at that. Plus, it's supposed to rain Wednesday. We have a chance to rain on Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday, I think. So if everybody's in agreement with that, no action will be taken on item number one. Let's y'all have something that you'd like to say or discuss. All right. Well, if y'all just keep us in touch and what you three say is what we'll do. All right. Uh, item number two, discuss, take action on use of Expo as polling location for all future elections in Sunville County. Christy, would you want to take front and center? The Elections Administration Board met last Thursday. We've been over this with both uh, party chairs. They seem to be in agreement. The board voted to do what Christie's getting ready to recommend, so now we need to bring it to the commissioner's court to get your approval. So, Christie, you've got it. What we're trying to do, currently in Somerville County, we have one early voting polling location and four election day polling locations. It um, gets to be a hassle with the parking um, <clears throat> as well as if a voter goes to the wrong polling location and they get directed to another polling location, they get frustrated and are likely not to come out to vote. The recommendation for Commissioner's Court is to approve one election day polling locations where all four of our voting precincts will be set up in one building, and that will be um, the expo. There's plenty of parking, and there's lots of space for people to go be able to vote and have everything set up. If somebody is at the wrong polling location, they can just be directed a couple of tables down and vote. So we would have a higher turnout as far as that goes. So we're hoping um, this is going to go really well and looking forward to implementing this and excited about it. Okay, you said there's not going to be any long lines. You're going to have different tables for different precincts. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good deal. And all the early voting will still take place here. Yes, sir. Primary election, general election will take place at the expo. And any runoff or any special election that we may have. Combined all precincts. Yes. And you talked to Frank this morning. Mm-hmm. And there, the dates are fine yes. as far as he knows. Yeah, um, usually what we do every year when the state – puts out the calendar, we call and go ahead and reserve that. Every year we do that. So, Would that start with uh, the May 22nd runoff? Yes, sir. We are planning on having everything set up there, which will only have the one commissioner to precinct race, so that will only be one table, and then the Democrats will be set up. Great. And the, the party chairs are in favor of this also? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they. Uh, we just recently had the board meeting last week, and they all agreed to it. Good. It was unanimous vote 5-0, I believe, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Very happy I have it. Well, do I have a motion to consolidate the polling place into one location, which would be the Expo Center? So moved. I have a motion by John. Second. Second by Don. Any further questions or discussions, issues? All in favor said motion. That's 5-4, 0 against. Thank you, Christy. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
<laughs> Item number three, discuss take action on outsourcing landscaping. I know Brian and Larry both have been working on this, putting it together. I don't know where we stand, what we've got actually done. I've got a, a price for mowing and weeding only for 12 months. Mowing and weeding only. 49750 And that is 12 months? Yes, 12 months. Okay. And then our guys do the tree trimming and things like that? Like yes, they always have. we'll still have one person under landscaping that will do all the flower beds, whatever it takes besides the mowing and weeding. And, uh, well, I fig the figures are around 25000 30000 savings. Plus equipment. That was getting ready to be my next question. What would we be able not to do? Like save the one full time and part time, or right? If we if we save one at one point five equivalent employees, I mean with with benefits and things of that nature, yes. And John come to Morales come to us about a month ago and, and requested another person. Right. So that. I see saving two people. You know, if this uh, if this proposed uh, outsourcing, I mean, it, it would include all of the equipment. They the vendor would have to carry insurance uh, to protect the county from any liability of any damages or anyone hurt. Um, you know, we've I've, I've checked out with a couple of other counties who do this. Uh, they have been pleased. Uh, with with that, I mean, obviously not using this vendor, but but just the, the going and using that service. The concept. Uh, they've been real happy with it, um, but, and it has achieved some cost savings for the for the counties. Well, would you like to discuss like, any of this now? Or I like to see, well, I like yeah, to see a, a, at least a year contract with a, maybe a two-year option or something. And I imagine Andy and Brian and Larry come up with some kind of contract. We've, we've got a beginning document that, that kind of addresses it's, uh, it's in Andy's office right now, but you know, obviously we wanted to not spend a whole lot of time on it until we got the understanding of the direction the court wanted to go and what particular elements are going to be in there? If the commissioners chose to do this, what will we do? It like May first? It would be May first to uh, August. I mean, uh, October thirtieth. But we're no, uh, May first through April thirtieth. I mean, okay, okay, yeah. you're right. You're right. Five, one, through four thirty, and look at it again next April and see where we're at. Yes, if sir. we choose to do that. All right. I understand and realize that the forty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty is just shy of our fifty thousand dollar requirement for going out on bid. Um, what's the comfort zone in proceeding with with that? Uh, from a from a financial standpoint, uh, you know, obviously the, the you're right. The fifty thousand is a is a hard number. So anything south of that, we we definitely don't have any. No. We're not sideways or anything like that in, in regards to that. If that is the total number, we can't have any change orders or anything like that. It, you know, once we go above 50, then we'll have to immediately go to a bid situation. But if this contract is all encompassing at that number, we'll be fine. Based on your uh, information from other counties, what uh, does this number? Well, I don't know if you can compare. That, that's uh, the problem. Yeah. I mean, because of our size, uh, the, the closest one that I looked at was Cook County, of course, and theirs was in excess of ninety-five thousand, yeah. I believe. So, you know, they have to do bidding. Will the contractor have the? Uh, will they make the determination on whether or not it needs mowing? How how do we determine that? The, the contract calls for a schedule, uh, uh, and it talks about um, 
you know, what we would anticipate that mowing schedule to be, whether it be weekly or? It, it's spelled out in this contract. Uh, there, 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 there's guidelines in the contract that you'll have to go by. And will there be provisions in this contract? Should we not be happy with the performance that we can terminate it? Absolutely. There will be remedies in there for effectively a default, and county attorney can certainly address those. But, um, but yeah, it would be definitely a default for cause. And okay. So based on what I'm hearing, the $49,750 for this one-year contract, is to to offset the cost of equipment and personnel that uh, we would have to add to our current budget. That's correct. Yes, sir. And you're talking about 1.5 full-time equivalents there? Yes, sir. Plus the part-time that we usually assign to them in the summer, usually one or two. Um, and we anticipate that this 49750 <coughs> will more than cover or reduce our cost. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make the motion. I have a motion by Larry to proceed with this contract for outsourcing landscape. Second. I have a second by Kenneth. Any further questions, discussions, complaints, issues for Andy, Brian, Larry? Are, are you comfortable that once we get the, the contract that's okay by the county attorney that we can go ahead or do we have to present it back to this body? No, I'll make the motion that that's no. Well, you that? I agree with that. All right. All in favor said motion. That's 5-4, 0 against. Item number 4, discuss repair for electrical on tower located at Top Mountain. Uh, the beacon was out on top. Dwayne called the gentleman to come out and replace the beacon. And Dwayne, correct me if I'm wrong when I jump in here, as he was climbing the tower to replace the beacon, the electrical was blown out. Uh, it took all the lights on the side out and plus the beacon at the top. So re to replace, which you have to have the beacon and the side lights for federal regulations, to replace the beacon, all the wiring, the controller, and the side lights, the total is $4,600. Is that correct? 3300 for the project and 1300 for the controller. We had to go ahead and we put this in motion to get this done, but I wanted to inform each of you what we did do. The initial climb when he went up, when he thought he was going to do the beacon, was 1280 So total cost involved, everything, is $5,580. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that's what we have proceeded forward with at this time. There appears to be a lightning strike. No, sir. Uh, the wire that's on that tower is the original wire that was put on the tower when it was built. So that wire is about 44 years, years, years old. 50 years old. Yeah. The insulation that surrounds the wire itself has uh, become okay. it's just the same it's brittle and frayed. He said there were several places along the tower where it has touched the tower and going through the inner and outer jacket of the insulation. Okay. Is this just an important Yeah, I just want to inform you okay. of what we did do, what we had to do, spending the money to move forward. Okay. The FAA will, can, if they wanted to, penalize this $5,000 a day for every day that lights not on. That's the reason we went ahead and moved forward. I understand. All right, item number five. Thank you, Dwayne. Discuss, take action on requesting unclaimed <coughs> capital credits to fund appropriate programs per local government code 381.04. Yes, sir, we do this annually. Uh, these are the unclaimed capital credits that come from primarily United Cobalt that's paid into the state. Um, there is a provision there that only the counties can request these from the comptroller's office and only can be utilized for certain things that are that are enumerated in the government code. What we've done in the past is we, we request them and then we uh, make a contribution to the Children's Advocacy Center. Um, so that, making that request that the court would make a motion that we request the credits and then donate them to the uh, Children's Advocacy Center. That's two years. It's been a little over 4,000, hasn't it? 4,300, yes, something like that. Yes, sir. Pretty and, good donation. And with April still being the Child Abuse Awareness Month, felt like this was appropriate time. 
make a motion that we uh, request the unclaimed capital credits and appropriate those to the child advocacy, advocacy group. I have a motion by John. Second. Second by Don. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. That's five four. Zero against. Item number six, approved budget transfers. Uh, these were emailed to you uh, this morning. Uh, we just have two. Um, the first one is just some moving around in the treasurer's office so that we could uh, cut some reimbursement checks for a conference. Oh, no. And then the second one is to pay for the uh, refrigeration unit uh, at the senior citizen center that we approved last meeting. Make motion to approve the budget transfer. I have a motion by John. Second. Second by Kenneth. Any further questions or discussion for Brian? All in favor said motion. It's five, four, zero against. Item number seven, approved county bills. You got that on your desk this morning. You say grand total of $106,718.91. Uh, with the majority of that being 97192.09, which is the amount needed to close on the density property. Uh, the rest of those, we just go ahead and we have these little items that have come up and we're going to clear those. We are scheduled to take care of the county's part at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning, and the Dempsey family shall finish Thursday at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning. I make a motion to pay our bills. I have a motion by Kenneth to pay our bills. Second. I have a second by Larry. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor said motion. That's 5 4, 0 against. Uh, do I, I have a motion? We adjourn this meeting. I have a motion by Kenneth to adjourn. Judge, you have a second. second. I have a second by Don. All in favor said motion. That's 5 4, 0 against. Adjourned at 10 46 a.m. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. How you doing, Mr. Lucas? It's every weekend. Not bad. I'll need a copy of that motion.